Hey, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Today we're reading Neville's The Power of Awareness. We're on chapter nine, preparing your place. Good chapter, they all are. Quick, short, it's gonna be great. Sit tight, stick around. It starts off with a quote from John, chapter 17, verse 10. It says, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine. Mikasa Sukasa, right? You know, what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. We are one, I'm you, you're a tree, you know, basically. But you know what I mean. They are one, right? I am is within you. You are containing I am, or at least a portion of it, right? Because I contain the other portion. So do your friends and your family and each and every one of us, right? But because of you, God gets to exist. Wrap your mind around that one. Because of you, creation gets to happen. It is through you which creation flows. The muse needs us. These, these energies, strong and influential as they may be, don't really do anything without somebody to make it work. You know what I mean? And that's you. You're God. I'm a tree. You know, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. It makes me think of fullness, massive energy that just, you're not going to bleed from it, man. You're not going to drain it. All these messed up ideas people have, negative deep subconscious beliefs about wealth or whatever that be. I mean, you know, money, health, vitality, love, friends, peers, connections, humanity, right? Active, seizing and grasping that which is and always has been yours. It's like there's this raging river that's just passion by a huge, wide, thick river just of energy, just blasting, blasting past. You're in so infinitesimally small compared to all this luminous energy, this raging river that we are up on the shore of. You know, at least dip your toe in, go for a swim, dive in head first, play. You're not going to drain the water. You know what I mean? You're not going to swim in all the water. You're not going to like be blocking other people from swimming, right? Get rid of all these notions, all these messed up things, man. I mean, it's crazy. Listen, the raging river is passing us by whether we are in it or not. Or, or the river could be akin to AM, FM type of radio frequency. Like it's there right now. You don't see it, but it's here, man. We're getting bombarded by all sorts of radio frequencies, right? It's just a case of tuning in to that which we want to hear, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like either way, they're all being broadcast, right? What are you going to choose to focus on? What are we going to choose to refine and channel and devote our awareness to, our consciousness to? Where are we going to put our attention? Attention Energy goes where attention flows, right? Your focus determines your reality. What have you been focusing on? What's most of the dialogue going on in your head? Remember that from a few chapters ago from, was it chapter seven, attitude, right? It just depends on what station we're tuned into. What kind of music is playing in your head? What are we consciously or unconsciously listening for what are we looking for what are we expecting to hear what are we directing our attention upon what is the nature and quality of the song playing in your head do you consider yourself worthy of fullness of wholeness of bounty and a kind huge harvest thrust in thy sickle and reap right all right listen <clears throat> all is yours all is yours. Present tense here. Do not go seeking for that which you are. Appropriate it. Claim it. Assume it. Pull it into the now. Your future self beckoning to you in the now. Create the hologram. 
right? Everything depends upon your concept of yourself. That which you do not claim of yourself cannot be realized by you. The promise is, whosoever hath, to him it shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that which he seemeth to have. It says it right there, man. Your focus determines your reality. Keep seeing how little you have and watch how little you wind up getting from there. Focus on the gratitude. Focus on the feelings of, of bounty, right? So to it shall be given. Hold fast in your imagination to all that is lovely and of good rapport. For the lovely and the good are essential in your life if it is to be worthwhile. Assume it. You do this by imagining that you already are what you want to be and already have what you want to have. But what we really, really want is to just to be in that state, right? To have those feelings of freedom, of happiness, of vitality, be it physical health or in passion, more feeling, more heart, right? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have it in here, feeling. And you are. Again, this is about how you perceive yourself. Right? That's a recurring theme here. How you view yourself. You see yourself as meek and meager and God is out there and you're not worthy. Yeah, good luck with this right? Or change your concept of yourself, right? And thinketh of yourself as creator, right? I am. You are. I am, right? Be still and know that you are that which you desire to be and you will never have to search for it. In spite of your appearance of freedom of action, you obey, as everything else does, the law of assumption. Whatever you may think of the question of free will, the truth is, your experiences throughout your life are determined by your assumptions, whether conscious or unconscious. An assumption builds a bridge of incidences that lead inevitably to the fulfillment of itself. Man believes the future to be the natural development of the past. Right? In a linear causality, as Dr. David Hawkins would say, right? But the law of assumption clearly shows that this is not the case. Your assumption places you psychologically where you are not physically. Then your senses pull you back from where you were psychologically to where you are physically. It is these psychological forward motions that produce your physical forward motions in time. Precognition permeates all the scriptures of the world. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And now I have told you before it came to pass that when it comes to pass, ye might believe. That was John chapter 14, verse 2, 3, and 29. Makes me think of this quote from Goethe. The moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that otherwise would never have occurred. A whole stream of events issues forth from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidences and meetings and material assistance which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. I also think of this great quote from Henry David Thoreau. If you advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. In common hours, in common man, in your common per You didn't do that. You didn't, you can't imagine something in a... 
that's your common, that's your muggle way. Those are the lemmings. Those are the sheeple. Those are the, hey, wow. Just thinking about Morpheus from the Matrix myth, you know, Morpheus, sort of like St. John, you know. He's the one who comes before the one. Right, he's the one who kind of lays down the foundation, so to speak. All right, maybe we won't go here now. Prepares people for the, the one, you know what I mean? It's preparing, dude, it's preparing your place. It's preparing your place. It's chapter nine, Morpheus. Morpheus is chapter nine, right? St. John, the Baptist. He came to the people and prepared them for the coming of the Lord. Hmm. The I in this quotation is your imagination, which goes into the future, into one of those many mansions, you know, and it closes down and collapses all the other ones, right? So pay attention to what you focus on, right? Your focus determines your reality. Mansion is the state desired. Telling of an event before it occurs physically is simply feeling yourself into the state desired until it has the tone of reality. You go and prepare a place for yourself by imagining yourself into the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Then you speed from the state of the wish fulfilled, where you have not been physically, back to where you were physically a moment ago. Then, with an irresistible forward movement, you move forward across a series of events to the physical realization of your wish that where you have been in the imagination, there you will be in the flesh also. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Like the, like the water coming down the river, down the mountain, to the great sea, where it then, like vapor, becomes the clouds which, carried by the wind, rain down upon the mountain into the streams and rivers and the cycle goes forth. But what was down there is now up here. What is up here is now down there. And all mine are thine, and all thine are mine, right? So that's preparing your place, Neville Goddard. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. Hmm. If you like this sort of thing, listen to your heart. You know what to do.